action. Exactly. Right. Hello. My name is Tim Cranmore and I'm going to show to you the productions of this machine. Um, the people we have here, I'm Tim, I'm a recorder maker. We have Jack who's holding the camera and this is Andy Mason here who makes the machines. Now this machine was designed about 30 years ago by a recorder maker called Alec Loretto who lived in New Zealand and he was one of the first recorder makers of the 20th century along with people like Von Huna, Andreas Glatt, Fred Morgan and he realised that you needed a machine to make a recorder windway. So I'm going to tell you what a windway is before I start showing how the machine works. <coughs> this is a recorder. The people who are getting this video will know what a recorder is anyway because you all make recorders. So this is a Baroque tenor recorder and <coughs> in a recorder you have the hole that you blow down into the windway and here we have one of these if you imagine this is the same thing but at a, an earlier stage of production and you can very clearly see the windway at the beginning and if I just shine a light through here you should be able to see do let me know w w when you're seeing that Jack yeah you can see the windway running down about the top quarter of the recorder and that's what we're going to make with this machine <coughs> so this machine is essentially a bench shaper <coughs> I also think of it as a transistor it's got an input and it's got an output this is the input and this is the output now this is the business end you'll see here pop round here Jack and just have a look <coughs> that we have a sharp blade and that is the blade that is going to cut this windway you can see how the blade is the equivalent of the, sh the shape of the windway <coughs> and here we have a recorder without a windway that I'm going to cut a windway in <coughs> now this blade it's 14 millimeters across this particular one and it's ground back from the front face at about 10 degrees so it will cut on this side this side and the top side now <coughs> to mount the recorder head joint <coughs> the recorder head joint goes here and this is like I said is the transistor what goes in here comes out here so I'm just going to describe <coughs> what we've got up at this end because this is the business end this this is the sort of the DNA the code so everything you want for a recorder windway is encoded in this little pattern of steel here now those of you who are mathematicians will have noticed that it's a lot further from here to the pivot this is our pivot you can see that universal joint there than this is from the pivot to the cutter in fact it's a four to one reduction so everything that we do here has to be four times bigger than will happen there now we're working in three dimensions here we've got side to side we've got backwards and forwards and we've got up and down now up and down of course well not of course because I'll just tell you up and down is, in, is brought about by this wheel here which is threaded into this bar so as I turn it clockwise the bar comes up and as I turn it anti-clockwise the bar goes down and as you can see as this bar comes up that cutter goes down and as the bar goes down this cutter goes up which gives you the depth of cut. Now the, the components of the input side here are three pieces of steel one, two, three. Now I'm just going to take out the template which decides the shape of the windway and show it to you. Just make a note of where it is, just there. Now, excuse me, 
little pupil. Stop messing with your mobile phone. <laughs> Get on it. So this line here is the equivalent of the same line that the cutter will follow in the head joint. So if I take this, re this recorder head joint and put it by the side of this template here, you can see that by, by following the shape we have here, then the cutter will follow the same shape inside the head joint, inside this hole. Now, these two wings here decide this, the, the, oh, I'll just put this back in. It's a good idea. That's pretty well where it was. Tighten it up. These two wings here prevent the cutter from moving sideways, so they decide the width of the windway that we're going to cut. Now if you look here you'll see that we've got a gentle <coughs> V shape. So the windway will be a V shape within the head joint. So this width here is less than the width of the window here. This by the way is called the window and the labium. Those of you who record a matrix will know exactly what I'm talking about. So I I'm going to cut with this machine a rectangular slot with a curve on it. The curve you will see is taken from the curve on the cutter. And this rectangular slot goes down the length of the beak of the recorder, crosses over the window, we cut that later, and then continues underneath this which we call the labium and as it goes underneath the labium the cutter moves very firmly into the ball and you can see what happens here because at the end of this profile we've got what you could call the ski ramp so if I just slowly move this you'll see as we hit the ski ramp this whole follower moves up yeah, the whole follower moves up and the cutter goes down and the cutter then moves into the ball. So that's the input end. Now you can, you can mess around with this, whatever you like. It's infinitely adjustable. You can do what you like with it, but we'll come to that later. So this is the output end. And I've already set up this head joint here to fit into the output end. Now, I hope, anyway. In permission, light relief. There we go. So the recorder head joint is clamped at this point between three points. <clears throat> you can see we have one bolt here, one bolt here, each with a sharp spike, and up on the clamp here we have another sharp spike. As this comes down, those three spikes grip the head joint. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that explains it. Excuse me a second. Now the windway cutter can now, you can see that, if I could get the camera back there, you can see the cutter just going in to the top of the beak, yeah? And it travels using this wonderful 
travelling slide here that Andy constructed all the way down you can imagine that when it gets maybe this far I can see because I've got a small pilot hole there you can see the cutter is now at what we technically call the block line yeah and after that it goes up to the ski ramp and comes out into the board yeah yeah now you can adjust these as well I'll go into this later because I've got this set up everything is adjustable you can do small recorders you can do big recorders you can do really big recorders you can do long long recorders and you can adjust the angle of the recorder using this system here actually I'll just show the adjustment on this just to show how it works this is loosened off and then it can be adjusted up or down using this screw then tightened up yeah yeah So I'm now ready to cut this windway and in theory if I start this cranking away, it's a hand machine, but you see I have to follow my input here and to, for, for the input I use my right hand. So I use my right hand here to come against the first wing for the side of the windway, the second wing for the other side of the windway. and all the way along up the ski ramp and then I adjust the height of the cutter using this wheel here. So I'm just going to see how this is starting to go. Got, yes, I have indeed got. Can you, so if you should shine the light down here? You got that? The beginnings of the windway. Yeah? Okay. Got that on Phil? Fantastic. Put this back on. So by continuing in this way. technical break there because I haven't tightened something up so stop the right so I'm going to continue cutting this one way you can see the action is hand here thumb on the one wing pull the shaft towards you down fingers on the other wing Shaft towards the other wing with the thumb and then central. Turn the key to bring the cutter up and go again. And let's see how the windway is doing. Right, you can see the windway beginning to take shape there. Yeah? You see the ski ramp at the end where the cutter is coming out in, in to the ball and the size of the windway. Now you'll notice that where this pilot hole goes through to the ball, that is going to be the centre of the window. And we want the cut underneath the labium here to travel beyond the bottom edge of the, wind, the window. We want it to travel beyond that point. 
So we're looking for this hole that we've got down here. And when that hole has been overtaken by the cutter, when the cutter has gone further than that hole, then we know we're getting far enough. So I'll just put this back on the, the machine. You'll notice also, I'll just point out, that this steel bar here is very heavy. This gives rigidity so that the weight of the steel bar holds that cutter very firmly against the wood and it cuts nicely. If this was just a, a very light or very flimsy, this cutter wouldn't cut. So that's the point of, of the weight. getting there now. You'll see the wind wave, you can see, I don't know if you can see the hole there, that little drill hole coming out, but the wind wave is almost overtaking that, that, that little drill hole. Yeah? Give it a it through the drill hole. Yeah, up here. Right. You see that drill hole? Yeah? So the wind wave is nearly overtaking that drill hole, but not quite. So I'm going to carry on. taking the drill hole. And we have now successfully overtaken that drill hole. So if you have a look down there, you can put a drill in it to, to put a drill into the hole. Too. Okay. See that? So now we know that the under labium is complete. Don't need to do anything more to that now. The under labium is complete. So now we have to concentrate on the wind way because the clever thing about a recorder is that <coughs> is the step. Now I don't know if we can see this. You might be able to see this. If I shine a light through the top, can you see the difference in heights? Can you see that? Yeah? Yeah, I understand. The difference in heights between the top of the windway and the top of the labium. That's a little slightly curved rectangle of light which we call the step. Yeah? <coughs> and in order to make the step, I want to stop the cutter travelling any further than that point. Now, I'm now going to move the cutter once again, so it's just coming out at the point here, into where the windway is going to be. The cutter is now sitting halfway across the windway, and here we have the last bit of the jigsaw puzzle, which you might have been wondering what is this for, and this is a stop. And this slides along, and that now stops the cutter going any further. Yeah? So oh, now, you see? I had wondered, yes, yes. You had wondered? I had wondered what it was there. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'll make them, I don't know how they work. <laughs> so now, having <coughs> got my stop, I now have to create the step. Now, the measurement of the step, it's very difficult. Some people measure it really precisely. If you have a large step, you have a big wind where, wind where you have a very open sound to the recorder, a smaller step, it's a finer sound. But because I'm not going to be able to see that step until I've cut 
this window, then at the moment I just want to put something there just to make a start. I'm not going to measure anything, I'm just going to say, right, I know it's going to be, <clears throat> well, in a tenor recorder like this, it's certainly going to be one millimetre or greater. And I know that here I have <clears throat> one complete turn on this, is 1.25 millimetres here, which if we do have, well, actually, this is probably more like a five to one. No, three to one, no, four to one, something like that. This is four to one, is it? So we know that for every complete turn of this, we have a 0.4 mil three mil three in the cutter. One. Yeah, we have a, 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 a 0 0.3 millimetre something. rod, that's right. So I'm just going to do two full turns. now started to create the windway but you can see if you look down here that all you can see is bits of wood because the shavings are hanging from the roof yeah yeah and this is where we're going to have to finish this bit well not finish it quite finish this video because the next step is to make the window and once we've made the window we can see where we are we can see what's going on and we can continue appropriately set the machine accordingly yeah set the machine accordingly I'm just going to say a couple of things about it that I didn't say earlier. So you've got height adjustment here for the angle of the piece. If you have this end lower than the midpoint of the axis of the head joint, you will have a re-entrant windway. If you have this point higher, you will have a windway that slopes down into the recorder. This is quite lined, it just moves backwards and forwards. But there's a subtlety here, which I'll just point out. When we supply this windway machine, this template here, oh, as supplied here, I don't need to take it out. This is the template that gives you the roof of the windway. The roof of the windway is designed by the shape of this template here. Now, when I give it to you, send it to you, this is flat. If you want a concavity in the windway roof, then you can make a concavity in the template. Don't forget, it's a four to one reduction. So if you make a one millimeter concavity in the center of this piece of steel, you'll have a 0.25 millimeter concavity in your windway. So it's up to you the design you want to use. You can decide the design of your windway at this point. You can just design the shape of the ski ramp. We've just given you a generic coming up to about 45 degrees and the concavity of the windway. I don't think there's anything else now except as Andy over there says, keep it oiled. Keep it oiled. Keep it oiled. Oil, oil all the sliding and rotating parts mm -hmm. every, at every unit. That's right. And uh, don't use it out of doors. Thank you very much indeed. I Time think for we'll tea. Stop that there. Time for tea.